Chapter 12, Markets with Private Information 12.1, The Lemons Problems and Its Solution In all the markets in general, buyers and sellers are well informed about the features and the value of the item being traded. Buyers know the benefits they get and sellers know the cost they incur. The buyer's marginal benefit determines demand, the seller's marginal cost determines supply and demand and supply together determine the equilibrium price and quantity. And if none of the obstacles to efficiency are present, the market allocated resources efficiently. In some markets, either the buyer or the seller has some relevant information to a transaction, that is private information, that the other lacks. One of these markets is one for used cars. In this market, each seller has private information about the quality of the vehicle offered for sale. When someone buys a used car, he wouldn't know anything about it until he has driven it for one or two, but the person who sells the car knows for sure. A private information can be defined as information relevant to a transaction that is processed by some market participants, but not all. Asymmetric information is a situation in which either buyer or seller has private information. An asymmetric, asymmetric information is a market for used cars with lemon problem leading to adverse selection and moral hazards. George Akerlof, a Nobel Prize winning economist, analyzed the theory of adverse selection which occurs when an off offer conveys negative information about what is being offered. He uses the market for used cars. Akerlof posted that sellers have more information about the car's quality than buyers. He argued that this leads to the death spiral of the market and market failure. This is the model of asymmetric information. In American slang, lemon is used car that is found to be defective only after it is being brought and plum or cherries or however are considered to be good ones. Since buyers can't tell the difference between lemon and a plum, they won't be willing to pay than an average quality car is worth. But seeing that buyers are only ready to pay for average quality, the sellers the highest quality cars, the plums, quit the market. When the highest quality cars exit the market, however, average quality of cars falls, which further reduces the price the buyers are willing to pay even more. This causes the sellers of the next highest quality used cars to exit the market as well. At the end of what is sometimes called the, the death spiral, the market collapses and buyers conclude they wouldn't want to buy any car offered for sale. Let us illustrate with an example a market with asymmetric information and what determines the equilibrium price and quantity. Buyers decisions and demand. Greg has found a car priced at $15,990. If the car is a good one, he gets the marginal benefit of and would be willing to pay $20,000. So buying a car for $15,990 gives him a customer, sorry, consumer surplus of $4,110, but if the car is a lemon, his marginal benefit is only $10,000. So paying $15,990 for a car leaves him with a negative consumer surplus, a consumer deficit of $5,990. Although he doesn't know the quality of the car, he knows what all his friends have told him about the cars they have bought from the same dealer. If all his friends bought good cars, he will be thinking that this car is mostly likely a good one too. In this case, he is willing to pay $20,000 and at $15,990, he would buy this car. But if all Greg's friends bought lemons, he will be willing to pay only $10,000 and $15,990 is much more than what he would be willing to pay. Therefore, at higher prices, there are few buyers and at lower prices, more buyers. The demand curve for used car slopes downward. Figure illustrate the demand for used car. If previous buyers say that they have never seen a lemon, buyers expect no lemons and the demand curve for used car is DG. If previous buyers say that they have never seen a good car, buyers expect only lemons and the demand curve is DL. If previous buyers say that some cars were good ones and some were lemons, buyers expect to see some of each type of car and demand curve will lie between DG and DL. Sellers' decision and supply. Sellers of used cars know the quality of their cars. Sellers know their marginal cost, so they know the quantity they are willing to supply at a given price. 
The marginal cost of a lemon is less than that of a good car and over a range of low prices, only lemons are supplied. At higher prices, the quantity of lemons supplied falls off and good cars starts to be supplied. In the figure at prices below $12,000, 12, only lemons are offered for sale and the supply curve of lemon is SL. At prices above $12,000, 12, good cars are offered for sale and the supply curve of a good car is SG. The market outcome, demand and supply determines the price of a used car and quantity traded, but the market doesn't work well. It leads to an extreme output outcome in which only lemons are traded. Suppose that buyers have learned from their friends that everyone who has bought a used car got a lemon. They assume that they too will get a lemon. Consequently, the demand for used car is based on the willingness to pay for a lemon. The market demand is a demand for lemons which delivers a low market price. At this low market price, good cars are worth more than their owners than they would, would from selling them. So no good cars are offered for sale, only lemons are available, so lemons are the only cars traded. The figure shows the demand for used cars, the demand for lemons, so the demand curve is D is equal to DL. The supply curve used car is S, the green portion of the curve is the supply of lemon and the blue portion adds the supply of good cars. The equilibrium price of a used car is $10,000. 400 used car a month are traded and they are only, they are all lemons. At equilibrium price, no good cars are offered for sale. Adverse selection. This market suffers from adverse selection, a general problem that arises in markets with private information. Adverse selection is a tendency for people to enter into transactions that bring them benefits from their private information and impose costs on the uninformed party. In the used car market, the low price adversely selects lemons. The owners of the lemons have greater incentive to offer their cars for sale. In the extreme case, good cars disappear from the market. The owners of a good car have no incentive to offer them for sale. They hold on to their good cars because the market price is less than their marginal benefit. A used car market with dealer's warranties. By giving a guarantee in the form of warranty, the dealer signals which car are good ones and which are lemons. This way, used car dealers convince buyers that a car isn't a lemon and that it is worth more than a lemon. Signaling occurs when an informed person takes action that sends information to uninformed persons. The grades and degrees that a university awards students as signals. The informed potential or uninformed employees about the abilities of the people they are considering hiring. In the market for used car, dealers send signals by giving warranties on the used cars they offer for sale. The message in the signal is that the dealer agrees to pay the cost of repairing the car if it turns out to have a defect. Buyers believe that the signal because the cost of sending a bad signal is high, a dealer who gives a warranty on a lemon ends up bearing a high cost of repair and gains a bad reputation. A dealer who gives a warranty not only uh, only to good cars has few repair costs and a reputation that gets better and better. It pays dealers to send an accurate signal and it is rational for buyers to believe the signal. So a car with a warranty is a good car, a car without a warranty is a lemon. Buyers are now eff effectively as informed as sellers. So the demand for cars depends on whether the car is a good one or a lemon. Because the willingness to pay for a good car is greater than for a lemon, the demand for good cars is greater than demand for lemons. But there is still a demand for lemons from people with a low income and a skill at fixing faulty cars. So there are now two markets for used cars, one for good cars and one for lemons. And in each market, uh, there is a price. Warranties solve the lemon problem and enable the used car market to function efficiently. In the figure below is the market for lemons. The demand and supply of lemons determine the price of the lemon. The dead weight loss from the oversupply of lemons that is great triangle is eliminated. The figure below shows the market for good cars. The demand and supply of good cars determine the equilibrium price and quantity of good cars. The dead weight loss from the undersupply of good cars that is great triangle is eliminated. Both markets are efficient. The market cost Sorry, marginal cost of each quality of car equals its marginal benefit and the deadweight loss that arises with asymmetric information is eliminated. Pooling equilibrium and separating equilibrium. There are two outcomes in the market for used cars. Without warranties, there is only one message visible to the buyer. 
all cars look the same so there is one price regardless of whether the car is a good car or a lemon it is as if all the cars good ones and lemons are in a one big pool so we call the outcome in the market when only one message is available and an uninformed person cannot determine a quality of pooling equilibrium with warranties in a in a used car market there are two messages good cars have warranties and lemons don't so there are two car prices for the two types of cars the information created by warranties separate good cars and lemons so we call the outcome in the market provides full information to a previously uninformed rate equilibrium no government action is needed to get the used car market to work well dealers warranties voluntarily provided do the job nonetheless consumer protection laws in most states include lemon laws and a federal lemon law specifies statutory for used car buyers in the relevant event that a de- dealer fails to honor its warranty